to redefining sexuality, where we give ourselves permission for pleasure, not just sexual and sensual pleasure, which are great, but also pleasure from speaking our truth, for really going for our dreams, for savoring those simple moments. I'm your host, Alana Pratt, and today I'm so happy and honored to have with us Marshall Hertzkovitz, who I met a few years back, and he's so great. He's so gracious to be on the show with us today. You might know his works with the series that he's helped to create on television, such as 30 something my so-called life once and again or perhaps the films he produced legends of the fall traffic the last samurai and perhaps you have also seen um, the movie he directed dangerous beauty which is one of the reasons he's on the show today and i want you also to know about him that he also migrated to the internet world with quarter life some of you may know about that uh, international destination with members in 60 countries one of the most successful scripted programs in internet history and also that he is the president of the Producers Guild of America. He's a who's who and he we have him here. Welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, thank you. So I want to know, did you choose to direct Dangerous Beauty or was it sort of dropped on your lap? How did it all happen? Well, uh, <laughs> it was one of those wonderful Hollywood moments where uh, the woman who was running our development at that time, Sarah Kaplan, who's a very successful television producer now in her own right, yes, uh, came into my office one day and said, just read a biography, making the rounds of the studios. This is the story. 16th century Venice, prostitute, the most amazing, brilliant poet of her time. Nobody mm. knew what to do with her. She's put on trial by the Inquisition, and she's acquitted. Wow. I said, I'll make that movie. <laughs> because um, the whole point is, you know, there is such a, there is such a, uh, a pattern in Western culture yes. of the sexual woman dying for her sins. Right. I mean, you know, going back to Hardy and before and, and you know, looking for Mr. Goodbar, on and on and on. Mm. And the notion of telling a truly subversive story about a woman who refused to be compartmentalized. And finally, for me, that's what the film was about. Yes. It was about the refusal to, to, to diminish oneself and say, I am this or this. I am all of those things. Yes. And the fact that she was able to survive at the end was so important to me from a political standpoint. Yeah. Yes, definitely. What was it like to work with the actress? For, help me with her name again. Catherine McCormick. Thank you. Did she really feel this in her soul? Was it just a, exquisite to work with her, or was it something you actually helped to bring out in her? <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> uh, she was quite young at the time. Yes. And wonderful. She's a wonderful, wonderful person. Uh, she was actually inexperienced in the world. I won't say sexually inexperienced. I'm sure she had you know, been with people. I, I didn't, we didn't get into it very much, but right. I, she was really not in touch herself with who this person was mm. when, when we started. Mm -hmm. And um, it, there was an interesting process that I think was more about how we spoke to each other and how we addressed the material and, and how she had to face certain aspects of her life um, and, and change them. For instance, just to give you an example, yes, you know, one of the most important scenes in the film was a sword fight yes. that she has with another poet. I love it. She had to learn how to do that, right? And she had to learn how to carry herself in a certain way. Mm. She was, um, you know, it, it's, it's a small import here in America, but there is a kind of a cultural um, um, uh, sense in England among young actors that they have to be very counterculture, that, you know, she would wear combat boots and kind of be hunched over and never comb her hair and not wear any makeup. And this was really an expression of what she believed to be her integrity as a, as a person, or, yeah. you know, as, as a professional, not wanting to, in some way, project her sexuality. Uh -huh. And we had to sort of work through that and say, no, you need to get in touch with your sexuality. You, yes. need, to, you need to walk into a room and... and be happy that you're beautiful mm. and, and, and enjoy that feeling and, and, because that's who this woman is. Yes. And, and so she had to go through some of that herself in terms of understanding that there's no contradiction between being a brilliant poet and knowing how to wield words and, and being a beautiful woman. Right. That, you know, we've created that contradiction in Western society. Yes. 
I totally agree. I adore this conversation. <laughs> Tell me what it's like to be a man who sees a woman who doesn't have that contradiction, who knows that she's a mother and she's a temptress and mm -hmm. she's brilliant and she's all these things. What mm -hmm. is it like to witness a woman like that as a man? Well, you, I, I really think it, it, it's dangerous for all of us to to generalize about both men and women. And I, I, the reason I say this is because I think many men mm -hmm. have to go through their own journey in life mm. to be able to accept that in a woman. I'll give you an example. Please. Uh, um, we're, we're all familiar with with that sort of generic concept, the Madonna prostitute complex. Yes. And I think many men suffer from that. I think many men, because of their own shame about their own sexuality, mm find it difficult to attach their true sexual feelings to a woman that they also like and respect and 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 want to relate to at a at a, at a deep level mm. and and because they feel their own sexual feelings are bad mm. they want to attach those feelings to a woman they think is bad in some way right. and that's actually a turn on for them mm. and, and i think so a lot of men must go through the journey of integrating their own sexuality. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, I like to call it the Madonna and prostitute complex. <laughs> That's where you want to end up. Right, right. You know, and you want to feel that the totality, and when you, I'm saying you, I'm talking about me as a man. I want to feel that the totality of my sexuality yes. is being met by the totality of this other person's sexuality. Absolutely. And when you feel that happening, there's this incredible freedom that takes place. Mm. That, because... You don't have to pretend anything. Yes. You don't have to be. You, you don't have to act like something you're not. Yes. You 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 don't have to hide that something might frighten you or that you wouldn't like something because there's someone there who can help you figure it out. Mm. You know, it becomes a partnership at that moment. Right. And it becomes playful, and it becomes anything you want it to be. You know, it's 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 allowing it to be different things, and I think that's very hard for a lot of people. I think a lot of people because of attitudes they, 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 they internalize at a very young age, rigidify about sex yes. in some way, and are only comfortable in certain modalities. And if you move out of that, they get very anxious. And, right. and I, I think that's really, for, for many of us, I think that's, that's, the, that's the work that needs to be done. Well, I'm so glad you articulated it that way, because that's the work I do. I call myself a sexy mom expert. I'm a life coach. Uh -huh. And it's very much about meeting our darkness and falling in love with our darkness, as well as our light. And it's that great caretaker who's a smoking hot woman who can have a boundary, but who can be tender. It's like all of it. All of and it. that's the work I do with women. That's fantastic. Thank you. It's it's fulfilling and it's wonderful. But I got to be honest with you, Marshall. Yeah. What I'm hearing and what you're saying is that that's also possible as growth and unfolding in a partnership. And I've, I've been married twice and I, I've, I've didn't work out either time. And I <laughs> yearned for that uh -huh. and never, I think I scared him off in, I think in a lot that. Of men are frightened by this. And I, I, I really do. Uh, um, but by the way, I yeah. think <laughs> this is like when you get into this stuff, it's so funny. What? I think women are so much better than men in general at, managing situations yeah in other words i think it's easier for a, a conscious woman yeah to work around a man who's not quite conscious <laughs> than it is for a conscious man to work around a woman who's not quite conscious i just believe that that's a good point though <laughs> because really i like to tell women we're the invitation uh -huh. or the catalyst, uh -huh. that there's a lot of great men out there that you can invite into this space. Yes. Um, and yes. so I, I do I do hear you. Have you had the blessing of being able to be in, an, in a relationship where both of you are, are, are integrating your totality in not just your, your sexual relationship and your emotional and your spiritual uh, relationship? I have, but I, I, I think... Uh, I've gone in and out of it, put it that way. I, there have been times in my life where I felt that thing happening, and and it's an extraordinary feeling. Yeah. Um, but I can't say that it's been a permanent situation. Why do you think? Well, I think that, you know, uh, I think that gets into more... Oh, boy. I, I'm not sure it's possible to answer that in a way that's universal. I mean, each person has their own issues and it's a question of the people they choose the you mm. know the, the the circumstances all, all sorts of things so mm. i feel like it, it might not be 
the wisest thing for me to start going down that road. <laughs> <laughs> but I can talk, I, I think, a little bit about what some of the obstacles are and how people can overcome them. Oh, please do. That'd be great. I believe. I mean, I think that, um, I think it, it usually comes down to shame. Mm. I think that we, we're a shame-based culture, mm. and shame is instilled in children at a very young age, and, it's, and it, it becomes a part of your neuronal pathways. You mm. know, it's very hard to shake yourself out of it. Yes. But I think that if people can confront their own shame and, and uh, sort of work through it in some way, yes. there's, that, there's that phrase, let it wash over you. Just yes. experience the shame and just realize that you're not being obliterated in some way. Right, And right. that, you know, certainly when it comes to sexuality, you know, I've heard other people say, and I know I have felt this at times, mm -hmm. if it's embarrassing, that's good. Right. That means you're, you've hit pay dirt. Good. You know? you're, the yeah. minute you're afraid to say something, yes. afraid to express something, that's because it's real. Thank you. You know, and so you have to come to value those moments, but you have to be with somebody who's not going to shame you uh, also, you know, right. there has to be an agreement field between you that there's that there's a, a sacredness to that to, to that vulnerability because mm. that's the real stuff, yep. and both people have to feel comfortable bringing it out. Right. Hard to, by the way, it's hard to find part a partner who's at the same level as you. Mm. You know, I mean, I think that's just a a fact of life. Yeah. It's interesting. I said it'd be interesting to see how you believe men most effectively deal with shame if, if you have an idea, because with a client I've had um, who felt shame about not being this felt 20 uh, year old body anymore, wasn't fully showing up, not just sexually, but not fully showing up in her truth in all arenas of communication. Yes. And what yes. I asked her to do was dance her shame for him as a gift Oh boy! to show him She's all these amazing things, but this is a place that she's so afraid. Right. And to give it to him as yeah. a gift. Yes. And, and can he be the space to witness her in pain and not fix her? Yeah. And just see what would transform. Yeah. And um, I was almost crying as I was giving her this assignment mm -hmm. because I know how deeply she wants to connect with her man on that real level. And I know her commitment to her full self-expression in the world. And she's an incredible actress. When you say dance through her shame. That could mean different things. What did you mean by that? I meant sit him down, uh -huh. put on some music, yeah. and show him through at her dancing movement what uh -huh. it feels like to be in a body that's ashamed, like maybe cover parts of her, her bum or her stomach that she thinks are too big, or oh, just okay. show him what uh -huh. it looks like, what the little girl inside is ashamed to, to show, mm -hmm. so that she could see, he's a, she's a temptress, mm -hmm. she's a whore, mm -hmm. she's, she's a mother, she's a goddess, she's, mm -hmm. she's all these things, and she's shame. Yeah. And because I think when we go into the darkness mm -hmm. and just be with it, mm -hmm. it starts to dissolve. Right. But if we if we try to avoid it, it grows. And it was a big block in her relationship. So mm -hmm. that's that's like a, a feminine way, of, one of many ways, but a feminine way of, of embracing shame. What do you think guys need to do? Oh, it's so hard because guys have so many ways of being in denial. Uh, yeah. They hide their shame. That's the last thing they want to reveal is that they feel ashamed. Exactly. And so they'll, they will, why do you think guys become violent, you mm. know, or abusive? Mm. That's just hiding shame, you know. Really? Uh, um, or they'll check out, you know, or they'll become more interested in pornography. Or right. Any number of things uh, uh, is really, really comes from the fact that they can't face their own shame. Wow. And, How? and I think... Getting a man to admit that can sometimes be difficult. I mean, sure. I you know, you can't force somebody to open their eyes to and something look in the mirror. Not, yeah. Um, What's the best way a woman can be a safe space for a man to reveal something like that? You know, the problem is there's so many different areas. There's so many different ways in which it can manifest itself. Yeah. I, I do. Here's what I think, though. I think there's a very simple process that we often misconstrue because it's so simple and so primitive hmm. but it seems to be sort of across the board mm -hmm. and that is men get turned on mm -hmm. in a more simple and direct way often than women do mm -hmm. often visually yes you know and and men are so simple that way yes and the problem i think many times is that Women are taught that that's bad, that's wrong, that's beneath them, mm. you know. And in fact, 
what I have seen in 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 the lives of the people I know mm-hmm. is that the engine that drives a relationship mm-hmm. is that sexual desire, mm. and it's so easy to evoke sexual desire in a man. It's it's like ridiculously <laughs> easy, you know. And it's and and the the point is instead of running away from that or being afraid of that or feeling diminished by it, yes. to embrace it as that's the starting point. It's not the end point. I think right, women get right. afraid that it's the end point. Well said. They, yes, they, they get afraid that oh well, that's the only way he sees me, or he yes. can find. The, and they also get insecure and they say, well, but you know, there are other women who are better looking than me, or prettier, or thinner, or whatever it is. Right. And they don't understand that the man wants to look at her that way. Mm. And and the way I look at it is um, uh, is that's how I de- that's how I define the word goddess. Mm. That. Every woman has the goddess in her. Yes. And the goddess is not her. The goddess is not particular to her. Mm. You know, it's, it's, she's touching the goddess. She has it in her. Yes. And so this fear that women have, and I've heard this so many times, where they don't want to dress in a certain way, they don't want to wear their hair in a certain way, because they feel that that makes them generic. Mm. That makes them, that's not specific to me. Mm. You know, I want them to love me for me. Mm, yes, you know? yes. That's not how men's sexuality works. Right. You know, men, and, it, and we might as well admit it, you know, when, when you look at the, when you, when you look at, mm-hmm. you know, those shots they do from inside a F- F-16 fighter, yeah. and you see how the, the radar finds a target and locks onto that target yeah. be, because it's, it's found the, the, the coordinates of what that thing is. Oh, okay, that's an enemy. Lock on, hit the missile. That's a direct representation of how the male brain works. That's okay. why they came up with that. Okay. And men go down the street looking at women, and they have that stupid thing in their brain that sizes them up <laughs> and goes, okay, you know, do I see those legs? Do I see that butt? Do I see those breasts? What is, what is, you know, and it's all unconscious, and it's all in less than a tenth of a second. Sure. And it's completely generic. It could be anybody. You right. know? And women hate that. But in fact, that's the fuel that drives a relationship. It okay. isn't the relationship. It's the fuel of the relationship. And if you can see it as the fuel, mm. as the stuff you need, mm. and, and, and realize that's not, that's not where the story ends, that's where the story begins. begins yes. But it's, it's, I think it's enormously helpful in, in keeping relationships going that way because, because then you can get to all the other stuff. Yes. I love what you're saying, and I knew that's why I wanted to call you, because what I what I teach in my coaching and my book and everything I'm trying to do with this radio show is, is that if we can give our bodies as a gift, as the goddess, not like a porn star, but, you know, which feels empty, but like the goddess, feel your body is a gift to him and offer it as that, a sacred gift. Yes. You will be met with everything that you, you crave bet. with your heart and your mind and the rest of it. Absolutely. But so many women are unwilling to do that because he doesn't respect me. He da, 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 da. You well, got to stand. All backwards. It's totally backwards. You got to yes. stand. And by the way, in. look at our society. The truth is we've relegated the goddess to the porn star and the stripper, in particular the stripper, by the way. Yeah. To me, someone doing an erotic dance is so ancient mm. and so powerful, Thank you. so spiritual, mm. and actually truly remarkable. Mm. And we have relegated that mm-hmm. to the damaged people, the people who, on drugs, the people... In other words, that's a fault of our society. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's actually an amazing, wonderful thing. Yes. So, uh, yes, that's where... That's that's the great stuff. And believe me, you can get a man going with that. And then <laughs> there's all kinds of possibilities then. That's great. That is so great. And dance is one of the main things. I mean, I used to be a dancer professionally, and, and dance is a, is a place where I can get women out of their head, into their body, feeling their beauty for the sake of them, yeah. for their own enjoyment. Like being flirting and being sexy, yeah. I don't. I teach women, don't do that for him. Do that for you. Yes. Because that yeah. fills you up to overflowing, and then you're this magnet to him. So, right. and, and then really giving that as the gift of at the beginning. God, I'm so glad to talk to a guy. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, what is the one thing you want? I mean, I, I, one more question, and then I, I know you've got a meeting at four. Yeah. Um, what is it like to be a dad and know all you know and teach your daughter this? Is it one daughter or two daughters? Two daughters. Two daughters. Teach your daughters this. Uh, 
it's amazing. Yeah. By the way, I had to wait a long time. In yeah. other words, I could. Yeah, you, know, you don't want to tell I was, them. I was ready to, I was ready to have these conversations when they were two, but you know, they weren't, <laughs> they weren't exactly. Um, oh, I had it all worked out in my mind. I yeah. was going to explain to them how they couldn't, you know, not to feel guilty about the the, the numbers guys would do on them right you know when 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 the guy couldn't have them and but you know all the sorts of things that sort of help them hold on to their own selves you know yeah. what i mean but i had to wait until they were ready yeah. to have those conversations but right. by the way we have them now and it's remarkable oh that's great and, and um and you know i know that i'm not like most dads sure. I, I understand that i mean there is a stereotypical dad mm-hmm. who says you know, over my dead body is that girl. Is my daughter going to go out with that guy? Right. I'm going to stand there with a shotgun and blah 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 blah. And I honestly, that's also shame. Mm. That's a man actually who cannot deal with his own sexual feelings for his daughter. Yeah. That, that's what that is. Wow, he's, wow. He's utterly uncomfortable with his own, with his own sexual feelings. Wow. So you got to get past all that. You yeah. got to go. This is a person. What do I want for this person? Mm-hmm. I had to ask myself, what do I want for this person? Yes. What I want is for her to be her fullest self. Yes. I want her to be a free person. I huh. want her to not be traumatized by something that's done to her. Mm. You know, I want her to make her own choices. Yes. Um, all of these things. So if that's what you want, then you have to work in the direction of making that happen. Mm. I can really tell the tremendous success you've had in your life is is connected to your willingness to do your work internally, and I, I honor you for that. Oh, thank you. I mean, it's you know, it's never ending, isn't it? That's no, the problem. No, definitely like, not. You, definitely never ending. <laughs> you can fail at such a high level. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can crash and burn. I've uh, been there. Yeah. In couple. fact, you kind of have to. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, the bottom is underrated. Yeah. Hitting bottom is underrated. Oh boy, is that true? One last question. Yep. Um, you don't have to tell me about the relationship, but are you in a relationship right now? Not at the moment. Okay. Yep. So um, so I was going to ask you, how are you, um, what makes you want to be devoted to her? So if you're not in a relationship, what makes you... What would, what what would, would make, would me make you want to be devoted to, yes, a woman? Oh, I mean, you know, it's both simple and complex. I think that, you know, I think that you have to... Um, it's like connecting with someone at a lot of different levels. Mm. That's what does it for me. Yeah. Is if I can feel that energy coming back at me and understanding me and feeling understood by me at a lot of different levels. Yeah. It's suddenly, it's like uh, like critical mass, you know, where literally a chain reaction starts to take place where this becomes incredibly exciting. Mm. You know, where there's a consciousness across the way, even if it's two inches from my face, mm-hmm. where we recognize each other. Mm. The recognition of our of our individual authenticities is so exciting. Mm. And, you know, and it's very hard for people to do that. But when it happens, it's amazing. Yeah. You have given me hope in men, <laughs> Mr. Hertzkovitz. I am so grateful for your wisdom, for your time, and oh, for well. your... Insights. Thanks for asking. <laughs> it's probably not what I think what you're doing is wonderful, by the way, and I think it's you know talk about a gift to to our to the human race, you mm-hmm. know, to help people find the joy and the and the and the true aliveness within a relationship is is a remarkable thing. Mm. So thank you. That's why I'm here, and I'm yeah. so glad you see that. That means the world to me. I'm so happy. Yeah. Well, good luck. Thank you. Big hug. Many thanks. Thank you. And I will be in touch. Okay. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye.